Peggy 18. My name is Simon Kudryavtsev. I'm the audio director for The Division 2. I think sound is important in games because it should always be uh, an element that just complements the gameplay. Sound, for me, should just always help drive the player forwards and be that natural element. We did trips uh, to Washington, D.C. and to, uh, to the States just to get familiar with the culture, with the, with the layout of the land. We actually had a lot of time to prepare and research Washington, D.C. and have the ability to record uh, sounds on site as well. The first prototype uh, that we did uh, in the Division 2 was uh, made on uh, Slope Street, which is quite close to Georgetown. And of course we had to go there also just to make sure that we had that specific street as well. What can we derive from this, from, from real life, and how can we apply it to the fictive reality that we have? We were talking a lot about what, what do we want to do to make the Dark Zones uh, differentiate from, from the open world. Should the Dark Zones sound like a war zone, something scary? And after a lot of talks, we landed on the word uh, silence. Evoke kind of a, a lonely feeling or a feeling um, of discomfort. We actually ended up going to Chernobyl. It did have some recording opportunities that I think are not available elsewhere. What we got from there was actually, if you listen back to it, it's quite eerie. There is still some wildlife there, but like there's no presence of human life. My name is Glenn Gathard. I'm the head of audio for Pinewood Studios, and I enjoy making noise. Here at Pinewood, we've been really lucky of late to be working with Massive and Ubisoft. I was a massive fan of the first division, and when I had the opportunity for myself and my team to work on it, it was pretty much like a dream come true. We've got to work on a quite a wide range of things like taking time to experiment over what's the best way for the dialogues to be produced because we're a big, big fan of performance. And whether that comes from Foley or whether that comes from the dialogues themselves, like we really like that kind of organic process of like allowing voice actors to be actors, like allowing them to be physical. The gun shoot for the Division 2 was insane. The unique thing about the gun shoot was that we could monitor the guns live from inside a mixed theater whilst firing. And so then you are really creatively recording. It isn't just capturing. We're going that next step of finessing. Never been done before. Not that I'm aware of anyway. And uh, by far the most complicated technical setup we've ever done at the studios. <laughs> Pinewood is a very interesting collaboration. What I wanted to do with the guns is to capture the more urban feel, the street reflections uh, that happen when you fire a gun on a small street or a big street or square. So the way we uh, collaborate right now is, is helping to bridge the gap between uh, the games industry and the cinematics industry. Well, my name is uh, Ola Strand, and I'm the music director and composer on Division 2. Coming from the first game, I wanted to stick to the original vision of the, of the scoring, how the music was, was done and how it was created. But then moving from New York City, wintertime, moving to Washington DC, summertime, I started researching the city and uh, figuring out what drives it musically, looking into the music history, like all the blues and the jazz and the hardcore and the punk rock. It was kind of obvious that we were gonna go for for a more um, rocky sound, like guitars, bass, and drums. That was all in my mind, at least. A couple of friends brought me to see this band, Town Portal, in Copenhagen one summer. In the middle of the concert, I was just like, wait a minute, these are the guys. I want to work with these guys. They are awesome. So we grabbed them after they, they played. They were interested. Three months later, we were rehearsing the music I'd written. Any sort of collaboration is a way for you to get real-time feedback, not staying in, in your own bubble and just run with it. When you cross that edge of getting to know someone from not knowing them at all, and then all of a sudden creating something really big together. 
I think every time you create something, it's it's good to have have something that makes it new and different to you. Um, and Town Portal, they represented this to me. We've been talking a lot about recording and the places that we went to and the collaboration we have with Pinewood, uh, but ultimately it doesn't really matter if, how much you record or how, how good the recordings are, because at the end of the day you still have to make it work in the engine. Obviously our world is so dynamic that the main direction that I gave to the team is to develop a soundscape that is constantly changing and it's ever evolving. How can we actually make sure that the sounds play back in a manner that's natural and, and that's also dynamic? There are lots of different systems at play, a system that we call bubble space. What that does is actually looks at the current width around you and that drives the amount of wind you hear, the type of ambience you hear, the amount of reverb. And we want to have a difference in small alleys versus streets versus squares versus parks. Basically, depending on where you are, it constantly changes. I always try to push the boundaries and to uh, ask myself how can we get it to the next level and, and how can we make our game sound even better and what's the hottest thing out there right now. I was really interested in Dolby Atmos. I was intrigued by how we could use the Atmos to enhance the features that we have in our game. One of the interesting concepts is of course Dolby Atmos for headphones. Dolby Atmos for headphones work with any type of headphones, any type of stereo headsets, so the player will be able to experience a better perception of a spatiality. So things that are surrounding the player will be perceived in a more natural way. One of the first things we did is experimenting with the sounds of weather. If we take rain as an example, to not only trigger the sound of rain when it rains, but also give it some depth by uh, utilizing everything that we have around the player. That means that in our game, when it rains, uh, we actually have a system that looks at the different uh, props around you, if it's a car or if it's an umbrella or if it's a drain pipe. And when it rains, you'll be able to hear those props react in real time positioned in 3D space, and I think that just gives a, a nice depth to the weather sound. With the mix, I think it's really when it all comes together. We're taking some time to really uh, look at what we have, look at the details of our world, uh, of our gameplay. One of the things that I really wanted to do um, is to really highlight uh, the uh, the player progression with the help of sound. So I think there is a, there is a way of tying RPG into sound and how, how that reflects. As you run around our huge world and as your character progresses, that will be reflected in the sound. But it's not only reflected in the sound of the character. Of course, the, the sounds of the world will also progress. The big mentality where we have the Division 2 is endgame first. When you actually reach the end game, you'll be able to play the missions again. And, and that time around, you're going to have uh, access to an exclusively uh, new soundtrack that's specifically written for the end game missions. RPG elements and the end game are two things that are like, very core pillars of our game that I really wanted to lift with the help of sound. All in all, it's been a great journey working on this game. We've taken everything we learned from shipping the first game, uh, the feedback from the community, and we basically sat down with the team um, asking ourselves, how can we push this even further? How can we push the boundaries? And I think uh, together with all the teams across all our studios and um, with the partnerships we've established with uh, Dolby and Pinewood, I think we've created something really special, and I hope the players will enjoy the experience. Play it on the world's most powerful console.